Okay, so I want to take a look at another type of factoring. And again, if you remember from the last video, there are five types that we're going to talk about in this chapter. The first one that we did already was GCF factoring. And this really is for um, any type of polynomial that we can come across or that we come across, we can use GCF factoring. So there's really no special requirements for that. Then the next one is difference of squares. <coughs> Uh, we usually call it difference of squares, um, but its full name is difference of two perfect squares. Um, this is the name that it gets called when it's in trouble, and this is what we usually call it, just difference of squares. All right, the third type was easy, general, trinomial. All right, I'm going to put quotes around easy because it's all relative. You might look at that and think it's easy and somebody else is not going to think it's so easy. So we'll just call it easy general trinomial. Um, and then harder trinomial. I'm not going to put quotes around that because everybody pretty much agrees that these are harder. And then the last one is grouping. So we've done this one already and now we're on to difference of squares. <clears throat> but before I teach you how to do factoring by difference of squares, I want you to see a certain type of multiplying that's going to result in us doing difference of squares. So just like um, when we talked about GCF, first we talked about distributing so that we could see how we would undistribute or factor by GCF factoring. So I want you to see what gives us difference of squares so that you know why we're going to why we're going to use that technique. So let's take these two binomials, x plus 6 times x minus 6. All right, now I want you to notice that they both are binomials. Their first term is both x. Their second term is a 6. The only difference is that one is plus and one is minus. Right, so that's significant because I want you to see in each of these that we do, it's going to have that same pattern, binomial, both terms are the same, but the only difference is that they have opposite signs in the middle. All right, so let's multiply it out like we did. I realize this is a ton of stuff that we're doing in one day, um, but I'm going to post these videos on your uh, my school so that you can go back and watch them if you need to. So in terms of multiplying, again, it's like a double distributing. Normally we just have this, and so we would distribute this like that. But when we have two terms or three terms, we're just going to do the same thing with each of them. So we're going to make sure that this x gets joined with the x through multiplication and with the negative 6 through multiplication. So let's do that. x times x. Again, I'm not going to write them out because hopefully you're getting the hang of this. x times x, they both have an exponent of 1. We're going to add those exponents to get x squared. <clears throat> x times negative 6 is going to give us negative 6x. This is positive 6 times x, which is going to give us positive 6x. And then positive 6 times negative 6, that's negative 36. All right, just think about that again for a second. The first two, remember we talked about the FOIL for multiplying. We do the first that give us the x squared, then the outer, the x times the negative 6, gives us negative 6x. Then we do the inner ones, the ones that are right next to each other. That would be positive 6 times positive x. Again, there's no sign in front of here, which is why we know it's positive. So positive 6 times x gives us positive 6x, and then positive 6 times negative 6, the last ones in each parentheses, gives us negative 36. All right, now when we clean up, these two middle terms right here end up canceling out because we have a negative 6 and we have a positive 6. All right, so they cancel out and we just end up with x squared minus 36. Good? Okay, let's do another one. <clears throat> let's say we have 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. Right. Again, they're both binomials. Both of their first terms are 2x. Both of their second terms are 1. The only difference is that one's a positive, one's a negative. All right, so let's multiply. We'll do the double distributive. So we're going to distribute this one first. So it's 2x times 2x. 
again, the 2 times 2 is going to give us a 4. The x times x, x squared. Then 2x times negative 1. So I'm doing the outer ones now, the ones on the each end here. 2x times negative 1 is going to give us negative 2x or minus 2x. Then we do these two because now the 1 takes its turn with each term in the second uh, parentheses. 1 times 2x is plus 2x. Both of them are positive, so we're going to get positive 2x. And then 1 times negative 1 gives us negative 1. Right, and again, we can use FOIL. We did first, outer, inner, last. Okay, we combine like terms. It's just these two because, again, they just have the x with an exponent of 1. This is not part of that group because it has an exponent of 2. We're x squared. And then minus 2x plus 2x, these cancel out, and we're just left with negative 1. All right, notice how that happened in this one too. We had minus 6x plus 6x, they canceled, so all that was left were these two. Same thing here, minus 2x plus 2x, they cancel out. The reason is because we have these alternating signs with exactly the same terms. So here I'm gonna get a negative version and here I'm gonna get a positive version and so they'll wipe out. Let's do one that's not like this because I want you to see that, that the pair of middle terms won't cancel out. They'll add together or subtract to give us something, but it, they won't cancel out. Let's say we have 2x plus 1 <clears throat> times 2x plus 1. All right, so you might think, oh no, this is the same thing. This is going to work. But again, we've got a binomial times a binomial. We've got same first term, same last term, but the signs are not opposite. They're the same. So let's see what happens here because I want you to see that this is special in the fact that they'll cancel out. So 2x times 2x, 4x squared, 2x times positive 1, positive 2x, 1 times 2x, Again, a positive 2x and 1 times 1 plus 1. I go to combine like terms. Again, it's these two terms with the x's. Now they don't cancel out like they did in the previous two examples. They add together to give us 4x. So we get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. So we lose that canceling effect that we did in the others when we choose the same numbers but the same signs. <clears throat> let's do another one that's like this. Let's say, except now let's choose opposite signs but different terms. So now let's put a minus in there and let's say this is 3x minus 1. So I just changed one number in that second, in, you know, in terms of the terms. This was a 2x, that's a 3x, but the ones are the same and the signs are opposite it's still not gonna work. That canceling only happens when we've got same signs but opposite terms. Okay, so let's do this. 2x times 3x, 6x squared. 2x times negative one, negative 2x. 3x times one, 3x, and positive one times negative one, negative one. What I end up with is 6x squared these combine to give me just a plus, plain old x, a 1x, plus uh, minus 1. Again, we don't get that canceling that happened in the center. Let's do one that works again. So let's say we have 5x plus, no, let me do the minus first, because each time I'm doing the plus first. So 5x minus 9 times 5x plus 9. <clears throat> Do 5x times 5x, the first term in each parentheses. That gives me 25 from the 5 times 5 and x squared from the x times x. Then 5x times 9, I'm going to do the 9 times 5 is 45. Again, these are both positive, positive 5x, positive 9. So this is going to be positive 45x. Oops. Now I'm going to do negative 9 times positive 5. That's going to give me negative 45x. And negative 9 times positive 9 gives me negative 81. I combine like terms. I get 25x squared. 
these are going to cancel out minus 81. All right, now I want you to look at the three that we did that had that pattern where both terms in each parentheses were the same, but the signs were the opposite. All right, in each one of these, notice, and again, I'm going to refer you back to the name of this type of factoring, difference of two perfect squares. All right, so what does difference mean? Well, hopefully you remember that that means subtraction. So notice in each of these polynomials, what I have here is a subtraction of two. That means that I've got two of something, two terms, one, two, one, two, one, two. Notice in the ones that didn't work, I ended up with three terms. I ended up with not differences, all right? So when we do difference of two perfect squares factoring, we're gonna be looking for a difference between them, not a sum. We're gonna be looking for two terms, all right? And we're gonna be looking for them both to be perfect squares. So I look at x squared and I say, yep, that's a perfect square because it's got a square on it. I look at this and I say 36, yep, that's six times six, all right? 4x squared, that's a perfect square because four is a perfect square and x squared is a perfect square because it's x times x, the same thing times itself. And one is a perfect square. Same thing here, 25 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square, and 81 is a perfect square. Um, so this also falls into the category of a difference of two perfect squares. Or again, just for short, it's nickname difference of squares. All right, <clears throat> I don't have any problems like this in the workbook for you to try, so I'm just going to write some down and have Sam write them on the board for you so that you can try them on your own. Let's say it's 3x uh, plus 7 times 3x minus 7. And then the second one, I'm going to say 8 minus um, 11x, 8 plus 11x. The variable doesn't have to come first for this to work. We just need to make sure that the terms are the same in each one and that the signs are opposite. And then I'm going to throw you for a loop here and I'm going to say, um, x cubed plus 9 and x cubed minus 9, All right? Because I want you to see what happens uh, when we end up multiplying something with a higher exponent besides just a 1 right here. All right, so pause the video and I want you to try these three. <clears throat> Okay, when you did these, hopefully you ended up, after some work, getting 9x squared minus 49. And here, hopefully, you ended up with 64 minus 121x squared. And this one, hopefully, you ended up with x to the 6th minus 81. Okay, that brings us to a good question because this right here, you might say that doesn't look like a perfect square because six is not a perfect square. But remember, what does it mean to be a perfect square? All right, hopefully you remember it. It means that it's the same number times itself twice. So what could we multiply by this that's the same that's gonna give us x to the sixth as our answer? And we can say, well, x to the third times x to the third because we just add the exponents to get to the x to the sixth. So that does make it a perfect square. Let's try that with some other ones. Let's say we had x to the twelfth. I'm claiming that's a perfect square. Well, if it's a perfect square, then we should have two identical things that multiply together to give us x to the twelfth. So what would they be? How about x to the sixth times x to the sixth? Again, we're using the product here, product rule. Like bases multiplied together, we add the exponents and we get x to the twelfth. Right, how about x to the fiftieth? <clears throat> 
<clears throat> what two things could we multiply together that are identical to give us x to the 50th? How about x to the 25th times x to the 25th? Product rule says when you have like bases that are being multiplied, you add the exponents. All right, how about x to the 13th? Hopefully you're saying this isn't going to work because there's no way that I can split this up into two things where the exponents are going to add to 13 and have them be identical. You might say, well, let's try x to the 6th times x to the 7th. That gives me x to the 13th, but these are not identical. All right, so that's not going to work. Um, we could say, oh, we could say maybe I would do x to the 6.5 times x to the 6.5. Whoops. But remember, our exponents on our polynomials, we already talked about this, they have to be whole numbers, so that's not going to work. All right, so 13 is not a perfect square. So what's the difference between the ones that worked and the one that didn't? Hopefully you're saying, it's odd, the exponent's odd, that's it. All right, so let's just write a little note here that says a variable is a perfect square if its exponent is even. It's not if it's a perfect square, because x squared is a perfect square, but its exponent is not a perfect square. Two is not a perfect square. So all it has to do is be even, all right? So as we're doing these problems and factoring them, uh, we're just looking for even exponents. Okay, um, I am gonna stop here. All right, bye.